Okay, I'm here in the puzzle closet and this is the most random puzzle in my entire collection. Literally, like, why does this thing exist? <laughs> So this is a jigsaw puzzle of a 1040 tax return form. <laughs> like what? What? Why? 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 Since it is uh, just about tax time right now, I thought this was the perfect puzzle to feature today. It is 500 pieces and like literally, that's all there is to it. It's just a jigsaw puzzle of a tax form. This was released in 1973 by Gamefiles. And I've talked about Gamefiles on here before. It's a company that I've been really wanting to do a deep dive into. And finally, today is the day. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Every time I open one of these old puzzles, it feels like blasphemous. <laughs> All right, I'm opening this box for the first time since 1973. Oh wow, the pieces aren't even in a bag. They're literally just in here. And now you can see the reason why I put down this backdrop. Uh, you can't exactly do a white puzzle on a white table. I had also been wondering if this red border was going to be part of the puzzle, but uh, it looks like it's not. Oh, wow. Okay, there is a lot of vintage puzzle dust. <laughs> puzzle dust that has not been seen for 50 years. So as interested as I've been in Game of Files puzzles, I've never actually solved one before. So I'm really curious to take a closer look at these pieces. Here is the thickness. Uh, they feel they feel pretty solid in my hands. And the front is kind of glossy. The printing looks really clear and crisp. And I actually love puzzles with text on them because you know what orientation the pieces are gonna go in up front. So if I get stuck later on, I can literally organize all of the pieces in the direction that they're going to go and that should make it a lot easier. One funny thing that I'm noticing is look at how much taller the edge pieces are than the inside pieces. I've actually seen this in uh, pictures of some of their other puzzles. So, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> so what is the strategy here? Um, looking at this like a jigsaw puzzle, I can definitely pull out these striped lines. That's a different texture. Um, maybe these dotted lines, I can get those all in order and that'll give me a big chunk in the middle. Oh, definitely these numbers going down here. I mean, that'll be super easy. You can just put them in order. Okay, well, I am really curious how this is gonna go. Um, let's, let's give it a try and let's see what happens. Okay, so speaking of numbers, today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. That's a good connection, right? <laughs> well, anyway, I think the Venn diagram of people who like puzzles and people who like learning is a circle, and Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. I mean, maybe this puzzle will inspire some of you and you're like, tax forms are my calling, but you need to know math to be an accountant. But seriously, Brilliant has thousands of lessons from arithmetic and basic algebra all the way up to a course about supernovas and one about terraforming Mars. I just love how interactive it all is. Like I can imagine your teacher coming up behind you and being like, are you playing a game? And you're just like, no, I'm literally learning computer science right now. It's perfect both for students who need a little bit of extra help and anyone who just wants to learn something new on their own. Oh, and there is new content added every month. 
So you can try Brilliant for free for 30 days at brilliant.org slash Karen Puzzles. I'm also going to have the link right down below. And the first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. But now let's get back to the puzzle. Okay, I'm 30 minutes in. So far, I'm actually having a great time. I realized as I started working on the edge that I really should have left this for last because it's just a lot of solid white pieces. But luckily, the piece cut is actually unique enough that I was able to just go ahead and finish the edge without too much trouble. I also decided that since this isn't going to be all that difficult, I would do it without looking at the picture. I also wanted to mention, I noticed uh, just how many of these squiggly pieces there are in this puzzle. I feel like I see this a lot in a, in a bunch of different uh, vintage puzzles from around this time and it's kind of fallen out of favor these days, but I don't really mind it. It just means you have to be really careful not to knock the pieces away from each other since they're not gonna lock together until you get all of the surrounding pieces. But look at this, you can actually pick up sections. It, it I mean, besides that part, um, it locks together pretty well. But now um, I think I've done the easy parts. So let's see what happens when I try to do all of this text. So I know this is a weird puzzle, but I'm kind of loving it. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> Who would have thought? So here is how much I got done. You can see that I really 
gravitated more towards the graphic element than the text. So we have a lot of these lines in here, um, these dots that I had pointed out before. You can see down here, I pulled out all of the pieces that are just lines with no text. I also pulled out all of these check boxes, so those all slot in somewhere. Up here, I was able to pull all of this bold text. And it's tricky because this is on its side. Um, you would think it would be right side up. Up here, I was able to pull this bold line as well as this line with the dotted line on top of it. And then the next thing I was gonna look at is pieces with a little bit of this bold line right on the connector there. So I just saw one. Oh my God, where did it go? I just saw it. Oh, here's one. Okay, so you can see the bold line there and the text is the correct direction. So I think that'll fit maybe right, nope, not that one. Maybe right, nope, not that one. Maybe, yes, right there. Luckily the piece shapes are pretty unique, so I've been able to use that along with the picture to put it together. So this is uh, surprisingly, um, <laughs> Like a great puzzle. I am loving this. It's so weird, but like, it works. <laughs> Okay, so I am two hours and 51 minutes into this. And look, I definitely could have done this a lot faster if I had arranged all of the pieces in the direction that they were gonna go, if I had looked at the box, obviously, um, if I had organized by shape. There are lots of strategies that I just chose not to use because I was having so much fun with this. All right, I've turned the time back on as I keep working on it. I was just thinking while I was working on this, do you think anyone ever filled it out and then sent it in to the IRS as their tax return? <laughs> Can you imagine that the IRS just gets an envelope filled with puzzle pieces? <laughs> it's almost like a political protest. You've made our taxes so complicated, so now I'm gonna turn that right around back to you. But okay, let's go ahead and finish this up. Oh man, three pieces left. One, two, and I'm done. Oh, that was so fun. Oh, I loved that puzzle. And let's see. Yep, sure enough, I can pick up the entire thing. <laughs> So that took me just under three hours. Although again, I did not use a lot of the uh, techniques that I could have used to make it go faster. All right, I have so much to tell you about this company. So let's finally do the Game of Files deep dive. All right, so even though I really ended up liking this, I'm still just like, who was this made for? Like the target audience seems like it would be 
CPAs, accountants, real accountants, not TikTok accountants, although they pay taxes too, so no judgment. I'm just so curious how many of these they actually sold and what the reaction was back in the 70s when it came out. So it is finally time for our deep dive into Gamefiles. I've been interested in Gamefiles ever since I got their version of a solid red puzzle, but they're just isn't a whole lot out there about them. So what I ended up doing is I went through every single listing on Worth Point, all 231 of them, and I made a spreadsheet organizing every single product they ever released. They were active from 1970 through 1974, and I managed to find 94 unique products that they released. There are probably others that just aren't anywhere on the internet, but 94 is probably like the majority of them. And it is just so satisfying as a collector to finally get like a full list of every product. You know, they released a finite amount of products and that information is out there. It just takes a little bit of manpower of cross-referencing all the photos in order to compile it. Now, I'm also occasionally going to mention a company called Nordevco. Around 1974, Gamefiles went out of business and a few different puzzle companies were all merged into one called Nordevco. Originally, I was gonna cover both Gamefiles and Nordevco all in this video, but they were active through the early 90s, so they released a lot of puzzles. It's gonna be a lot of stuff to go through. So I'm gonna do my deep dive about them in a future video. Okay, so speaking of Nordevco, it's a good thing I liked this puzzle because they actually re-released it. Yes, there is a second version of the 1040 income tax form puzzle. <laughs> so here are the two boxes next to each other. You can see they're uh, very similarly designed. However, this one is actually two-sided. So you don't just get one income tax form, uh, you get the back as well. Here's what the two sides of the boxes look like. And here are all of the pieces from the double-sided version. So sure enough, um, it's printed on the front and on the back. <laughs> so I think if I do this one, I'll have to solve it from the back. Also, the printing on this one is different from the first one because you can see we don't have those really tall um, edge pieces anymore. And the new version is a little bit more cream or off-white, whereas the original is like a bright white. But I'm so excited to solve this one once I do my deep dive video about Nordevco. Okay, so in addition to the tax form, Gamefiles also released a handful of other kind of random household objects as jigsaw puzzles. They released a calendar puzzle, which came with a felt marker so that you could fill in all of the numbers of the year that you're solving it in. Unfortunately, I saved this photo off of eBay ages ago, and I cannot find any other proof that this puzzle actually existed. So if anyone has one and wants to sell it to me or just send me more photos, uh, please get in touch. So there's also this Sunday Times of London crossword puzzle jigsaw puzzle. And this crossword puzzle is actually a cryptic crossword, which means that all of the clues have some kind of wordplay in them. I've never seen a cryptic crossword on a jigsaw before. Um, I think I have to get that. Still on the puzzle on a puzzle theme, they also did an amazing puzzle, which 
you guessed it, it's a maze. On the back of the box, they have this whole history of mazes and minotaurs, and they make sure to tell you that there is no minotaur in this box. <laughs> I've talked about this one on here before, but they also did their solid red puzzle called The Red Menace, and they did a solid white puzzle called the Design Your Own Jigsaw Puzzle. My copy is still sealed. I really should open it up and see what's inside, but I think that's gonna be its own uh, separate video. So then you can also get the cover of the Farmer's Almanac. I don't think this one would be quite as fun as the income tax puzzle. Oh, and then this one is so funny. So if you're into tennis, you might be thinking like, I'd like to get a tennis themed jigsaw puzzle. Well, how about a graphic bird's eye view of just the tennis court lines with a few little graphics thrown in there. <laughs> Honestly, I think that one is so great. Um, I need to get it. Similarly, you can also get a bird's eye view of the Augusta National Golf Course. Although this one is a little bit more illustrated. So here are a couple more just random miscellaneous puzzles that they released. This Spiro Agnew one was one of the first puzzles they ever released. Uh, luckily, they quickly got away from political puzzles, so we can all just move on from that. So, okay, the other category that they did a lot of puzzles of is map puzzles. And these are not stylized or illustrated in any way. They're literally just road maps. They had a whole series of 500 piece roadmap puzzles, including New Jersey, Florida, Texas, uh, a few others. Some of the smaller states they combined into one single puzzle. So it's not every state, but it is uh, quite a lot of states. And then they also released these 100 piece roadmap puzzles of 14 major cities in the US. Honestly, if you got all of the map puzzles all together, it would be really fun to see how much of the country you could put together. Okay, and then this one isn't quite as weird, but they released a series of subway map puzzles. There have been a handful of companies over the years that have done subway map puzzles, so this one isn't as random. But I really like the design of these. I like the extra colors that they added to some of the boxes. Kind of similarly, uh, they also did a 500 piece puzzle of the LA freeway system. Now LA does have a subway, but it was not in operation until 1990. And this puzzle came out in the 70s, so didn't exist yet, but okay, now we're getting super random again. They also released a series of navigational chart puzzles. Like who were they targeting with these puzzles? Ship captains? <laughs> and then weirdly, I also found this puzzle of the Virgin Islands, which is not branded as Gamophiles. It's branded as Shell Seekers, but it looks just like the Gamophiles ones. So maybe it was just like produced by them, but not sold by them. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, now this is the most random and the funniest thing of all. <laughs> so they released one single puzzle that was a photograph of a city. The city was Washington DC. I couldn't find any other similar puzzles that they released. And the box says that it was released in 1975. And that was right when the company was going out of business. So this must have been one of the last puzzles that they ever released. But it's not that weird yet. Here's where it gets even stranger. So Nordevco released a very similar puzzle to that one in 1993. It's a slightly different picture, but it's basically the same puzzle. And it has a very similar box design, even though this was after 
Nordevco had been around for over a decade and were doing like fully designed, like full of graphics uh, types of boxes. And then I think Nordevco folded around 1994. So again, this would have been one of the last puzzles they ever released. So both times were they just like, we may be going out, but we will release this puzzle of a random photo of Washington DC before we do. But okay, let's get back to Gamefiles. So they also had this series of uh, four stills from classic movies, which were called the MGM Fabulous Four Collection. And then in a totally different direction, they had this series of mini puzzles of hex signs. These seem really rare, or at least there's just not a lot of photos of them online. So when I was researching this puzzle, one of them showed up on eBay, so of course I had to get it. <laughs> Here is the finished puzzle. Um, super cute, really vibrant colors. Um, I don't know why they made these, but <laughs> I enjoyed putting it together. I'd like to have the other ones. So in addition to these, they also released a series of Beatrix Potter puzzles for kids. These were each 100 piece puzzles. And then they also did a series of 100 piece paw prints puzzles as well. And all of their mini puzzles were under the brand Pick Me Up Puzzles across all of the different categories. And finally, they also had a board game division. A lot of these games seem super rare. Um, a lot of them are very expensive online. And I don't think most of them really ever took off. But you can see that their graphic design stayed consistent across all of their products. They look so retro. I really like a lot of them, especially this Great City game. I think that board is really pretty. And this front page game, it looks sort of like Scrabble almost, except that you're building the front page of a newspaper. So, okay, that is everything that they released under the brand name Gamefiles. What a weird company. They did random household objects, road maps, hex signs, subway maps, navigational charts, kids illustrations, movies, board games, and that one picture of Washington DC. So an interesting thing about Gamefiles is that they put their address on every single box. So by organizing which address is on which box and what year those puzzles came out, we can track where the company was. So from 1970 to 73, they had a P.O. box in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Then in 1974, they moved to Morristown, New Jersey. That's when they go out of business. So when Nordevco starts releasing puzzles in 1976, uh, those are in Westfield, New Jersey. There are a couple more addresses on the Nordevco boxes, um, all in New Jersey, except for one random one in New Hampshire for some reason, but I will cover all of that in my video about Nordevco. And so that's why I've been like especially interested in Gamefiles because they were from New Jersey and I'm originally from New Jersey, so I know where all of these places are. So they also put an ID number on every single puzzle. And that is also something that I tracked in my spreadsheet. It is so satisfying when you have a bunch of puzzles all from the same series and the ID numbers are just one right after the other. Like you can be sure that you found all of them, but then it is so unsatisfying when you're skipping some numbers and you're like, 
what missing puzzles are out there that have those ID numbers? <laughs> Where could they be? Whose basement are they in? <laughs> so I mentioned gamophiles in a video a while back and a viewer named John actually did some digging into them on newspapers.com. So all of this following research is uh, all from John. So starting in 1970, we have this whole article about the Spiro Agnew puzzle. It reveals that the artist is Anthony Di Gregorio, and apparently Agnew himself liked the puzzle. In 1972, we have a brief mention of the New York subway puzzle, and we have an ad for all of the movie puzzles. So in November of 72, we can see exactly how many of the roadmap puzzles have been released so far. And actually, not all of these boxes have the year on them. So this is going to help me date them in my spreadsheet. After that, we have a couple different ads, including one for the tax form puzzle that I just solved. So this ad I have featured before to look at the Lawson and Lawson puzzles. But now let's take a closer look at the game of files part. There's the Christmas puzzle, the mini map puzzle, and the full size map puzzle all pretty standard. But what is this six foot maze? Apparently it's printed on plastic coated paper and it comes with a hanger to hang it up on the wall. It's not the maze that I talked about earlier because that one was definitely a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle. So if anyone had this or has any real photos of it, uh, please let me know. Next, we have another ad with a bunch of products and most of them were already in my spreadsheet. So you can pause here if you wanna read how they were advertised back in the day. But there were actually two products on there that I hadn't discovered yet. There's a game called Coloration and once I knew what to search for, I found all of these photos on boardgamegeek.com but it wasn't tagged as gamophiles, so that's why it didn't show up earlier. But it's really pretty. I mean, I'd love to play this someday. And then there's a jigsaw puzzle called the United States Zip Code Map, which is another kind of utility puzzle. <laughs> it is just a zip code directory, fun and useful. <laughs> but I couldn't find any actual photos of that puzzle. So if you have one, please get in touch. Next is a review of their board game, The Chicago Inn. Um, again, you can pause to read the entire thing. Apparently it is in the rules that one player is the assessor, basically the banker from Monopoly, but they are encouraged to steal from the bank and they stay on as assessor until another player catches them stealing. <laughs> There's also a lot of what seemed to be like inside information about Chicago in the 1970s. It kind of just seems like political commentary disguised as a board game. So once we reach 1975, we get a little bit of information about the fate of gamophiles. This is from December of 75, and it says they went out of business last year. So that would be 1974. And that makes sense because I could literally only find one product that was released in 75, which was that random picture of Washington, D.C. In 1976, all of the puzzles are being labeled with Norton and Williams, and that continues until 1981 when they have fully transitioned just to Nordevco. Now, at the beginning of Nordevco's run, a lot of their puzzles looked just like gamophiles, like the same layout, the same just kind of random pictures of household objects. They even released even more map puzzles all the way into the 90s. 
But back to Game of Files, we have one more little snippet from 1976. So this is a notice of settlement. It says something about an audit. I'll be honest, I don't really know what this means. <laughs> But either way, like, it doesn't really give any information about the company itself. And that's about all I've got on Gamefiles. <laughs> but wait, that's not all I have on Gamefiles. So I reached out to the Morristown Public Library and they got back to me after I filmed the rest of this video. We love a public library. Thank you, public libraries everywhere. So they found another couple of things. So first is a job posting from September of 1974. So, okay, I think I was wrong before. In this article, I interpreted last September to mean September of 74 but I think they actually just mean September of 75, because if they went out of business in September of 74, it's weird that they would also be hiring in September of 74. But then it's also weird that they only released one product in 1975, if they were still in business for most of that year. Okay, so then there's this ad from March of 1975 of this department store that's having all kinds of different events, including creative puzzle making with Gamefiles. So again, that's another piece of evidence that they went out of business in 75, not 74. But looking at this ad, I'm also just kind of like, what was this event? Like, did they just have a whole bunch of these there for people to draw all over? But I mean, this is gonna take a bit of time to assemble. So did they have blanks of like 100 piece puzzles? Or maybe people were just drawing on cardstock and then like cutting it up to make a puzzle. I don't know. So, okay, those were two kind of small things. But then, this is what I was looking for. So they managed to pull the Morristown City Directory from 1974, which listed the president and the vice president of Gamefiles. Their names aren't anywhere else on the internet connected to this company. So this really was like the missing piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. So I'm not going to release their names yet because uh, I am trying to get in touch with them. I think this video is far long enough already. So if they get back to me, um, I will make a follow up video because I have so many questions. So, okay, what do you guys think? Did you have any of the puzzles that I mentioned? Would you want to try the income tax puzzle. <laughs> uh, remember to check out my Patreon for bonus puzzle videos and to help support me in doing all of this research. Your code word for the comments will be taxes. <laughs> Happy puzzling and I will see you all in the next one.